Tonight, we meet an Ontario lawyer who's a fighter in the courtroom and elsewhere. We drop in on a Newfoundland family and their adopted duck. I'm not a quack quack, but I died a duck. And we wrap up our season with some memories from the past year. <laughs> you did it. Give me a high Everybody and welcome to our show. Uh, this is a parking ticket. We all get them, and uh, there's no arguing this one. I didn't feed the meter. But you know, if you ever wanted to fight one of these, have we got the lady to defend you? She never backs down from a fight of any kind. Jenny Reed is a criminal defense lawyer. When she goes looking for justice, she has to be ready to fight for it. What you have is a defendant who's got the whole system up against them. And then what they have is a lawyer standing on their side. You never know if someone's going to get arrested, whether the crowd's going to release them, whether they're not, whether you're going to have to have a fight on your hands that day, whether you're not. <laughs> Chances are Jenny will have a fight on her hands. If not in the courtroom, then later that day in the boxing ring. Get that jab out. Get it out. Mean business with it. In fact, she's staying in there too long. For the last three years, she's been trading her briefcase for boxing gloves a few times a week. Jenny says it's relaxing. When I have a really bad week or I get really stressed out, it's just like a release of all the tension and stress. And you can really take it out on the punching bag or whatever. So what happened today? What uh, what went on in court today? Um, I had some clients up for, for a guilty plea. And I had a bit of trouble keeping them out of jail. Many of Jenny's clients are in jail to begin with. She's often their last resort, their only hope for parole or transfer or just plain fair treatment. You have to work so hard to get justice that you shouldn't have to work that hard for it. It should, justice should not, not be a, some, a given. I mean, it's not to be taken for granted, but it should at least, you should have an expectation of justice. And often to get justice for certain people is very difficult. Luckily, Jenny has always liked the challenge. That's why she went into law, and that's why she specialized in criminal law. Hello, Jenny Reed speaking. Traditionally, criminal law has been dominated by men. Okay, but if he has been charged with something, he's certainly entitled to a lawyer's call. But Jenny doesn't place and too much stock in tradition. I wasn't raised that way. No, I mean, if, if you want to do something, and you think you can do it, and you want to do it, we'll try it. Like it. 24 shots. It was three years ago that Jenny moved from the courthouse to the clubhouse. She was the first woman to join the Kingston Boxing Club. And some of the guys were pretty sure she'd be the last. They really expected um, that I, I wouldn't like it or I would get hurt and I'd go home and I would never come back. Or I'd go home crying or whatever, I don't know. And they were really surprised when I stuck it out. The men have recovered from their surprise. 
but they're still a little nervous about sparring with a woman. It makes Jenny mad when they don't seem to try as hard or hit as hard. They call it courtesy. She calls it plain, old-fashioned chauvinism. What do you do in the ring when she smacks you and you're standing there? What do you do? Well, me, I, I just do what I usually do, and since she's a lawyer, I don't hit her back. <laughs> I don't like sparring with women. I hurt them. Have you felt what her left uppercut is like? What do you feel when you have to hit her? I mean, you... I don't. <laughs> My mother will beat me up. <laughs> but Jenny's toughest opponents weren't in the boxing ring. They were the officials in charge of the sport. Until three years ago, they refused even to register female boxers. Then Jenny wrote them a letter accusing them of discrimination and threatening to take them to court. And, oh, yes, she just happened to mention she was a lawyer. On my left is a young lady lawyer from Kingston, Ontario. Young lady lawyer. Five months after she wrote the letter, the fight card read Therese Robitaille of New Brunswick and Jenny Reed of Kingston, Ontario. It was the first sanctioned amateur boxing match for women, not just in Canada, but in the world. Boxing history was being made that night, but Jenny wasn't exactly reveling in it. What are you thinking right now? I hope this is over soon. <laughs> Jenny ended up losing the match. But the exposure seems to have had an effect. In the past two years, the number of registered female boxers in Canada has gone from two to nearly a hundred. These things are changing, and they change slowly, and at some point, if you're lucky, things are ready to change when you're there, and you're there at the right time and the right place, and I was just lucky to be there at the right time and the right place. Lucky, maybe, but also determined. Here in the boxing ring, as well as in the courtroom, Jenny Reed has managed to turn tradition on its ear by never backing down from a fight. I think when I started boxing, I was fighting for myself and for my self-esteem, my confidence. And I think at times in the criminal justice system, I'm fighting for somebody else for their self-esteem, for their survival. My client is trying to comply and wasn't able to do so. There's always the thrill when, when you really can make something work for somebody, when you can fix it. Objection, Your Honor. It's clear that my friend is trying to introduce hearsay evidence and that is not admissible. I'm not going to back down for anybody. Oh, it's a beautiful day, Chip. story takes us to Newfoundland. We're about to meet a woman who has a very special member of the family. Let me sing about it. In the pretty little town of Bayview, in a tiny house on a hill, morning is different than anywhere else than in any house on any hill. You see, Chipper the Duck is the morning clock in the home of Donna Head. There's no need for digital alarms to wake her. Donna's duck does it instead. Oh, it's a beautiful day, Chipper. Now breakfast is as normal as breakfast can be for anyone that lives with a duck. She has breakfast a la strawberries, but he's a duck a la ronde. How does this happen, you well may ask? What in is going on? Well, Donna was giving Mother Nature a hand when Chipper the Duck came along. Well, ducks are usually born in the spring, and Chipper was born in mid-October. It was too cold outside to put him, so we kept him in the house. 
Now, considering that the first thing the duck saw was Donna standing there, it bonded his whole world to her, and he follows her everywhere. It's a family situation that rarely comes along. Donna, too, is bonded with her fair feathered friend. Donna's duck is like a son. I, I can't have cats or dogs. I'm allergic to them, and the duck is, uh, it's still in that face, I guess, right now. But, I mean, I'm, you know, I enjoy the dog. Now, when Donna has a hair appointment, Chipper has one, too. He sits on the counter and preens himself like little duckies do. On the weekends, you'll find Donna and her duck out for a Sunday stroll. There's nothing like breathing winter fresh air and waddling through the snow. And at the local supermarket, they carefully shop for hours. You see, one thing you learn when you live with a duck, you need a lot of paper towels. Thank God I don't have carpet. Now when everyone cuddles on the family couch to watch a little TV, Chipper pecks at the old converter. There's something special he wants to see. And at the end of the day, it's bath time play. Now make sure the water's not too hot. And for his little bath time play toy, hey, what else but a little rubber duck? I'm not a quack quack, but I died a duck. When I was an ugly duck, thought I would never dream I could be so happy. Well, there you have it. The life of Donna's duck. It's pampered every day. Who every night gets a bedtime story and a kiss on the bill before bed. Good night. You know, when you see a ducky that gets this lucky, it really does things to your head. I mean, why are we all working so hard for a living? We should all be ducks instead. Good night, Chipper. This is fabulous. Look at this. He's even got, like, chains on the wall. Now, look at these. These are the, these are the shackles. You know, whenever we reach the end of the season like this, it's always fun to look back at some of the places we have been in this country of ours and to recall the wonderful people we met during our travels. So before we say goodbye tonight, let's have one fond look back at some of the memories from this past year. Who can forget our close encounter with Eric Bennett's ostriches in Ontario? <laughs> gently, gently. So, Wait Hurry up. Packing worms with Bev Yaskew in Manitoba. One, two, three, four. And, uh, wow. Oh, yeah. In Nova Scotia, we learned how to be a town crier with Alan McGuinness. We fed Quebec trout by hand with Rolly Tremblay. What's your thumb? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he nicked me. <laughs> he nicked me. <laughs> In British Columbia, Vivian Lougheed took us up Teapot Mountain, way up. Are you coming? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has no mercy. <laughs> but it was worth it. Isn't that something? Well, Wayne... Hey, you hey, did it. Give me a high Whoa, five. Look out, look out. <laughs> now this was something to remember. The space shuttle in Prince Edward Island. The man who built it is Bart Bourne. It's part of an amusement park he's set up on the island. Incoming. <laughs> Designing a full-size shuttle from a model is a tall order, but for Bart, this was child's play. I honestly cannot believe that I am 50 years old. I'm, my kids are more mature than I am. I feel sorry for them. <laughs> now, the space shuttle in Prince Edward Island may be an unusual sight, but a bullfight in southern Ontario? At a farm near Kitchener, we joined the crowd to watch some Portuguese-style bullfighting with a Canadian twist. 
You see, the bull doesn't get hurt. He's wearing a Velcro vest, and the crowd loved it. Oh, I am so happy. I'm an old man, but when I be here, I feel like a young guy. In Sheffield, New Brunswick, we met Ralph Crawford. Ralph runs a used bookstore. So how many books does he have? Well, at last count, about 100,000. Somewhere in that vicinity. Now, where do you get them all? All over Canada. If you don't see what you're looking for, then you don't need it. Ralph's father, Walter, loves to give tours of his son's business. So if you're looking for something specifically, do you know where, where it is? No, but my boy does. He does? Yep. But the volumes inside were nothing compared with the volume outside of the traffic on the Trans-Canada Highway. Ralph? Oh, sometimes. I mean, when you're trying to read, do you not find the noise is deafening with these trucks? No, it's harder when I'm trying to talk to somebody. Oh. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Life is a lot Let more peaceful for Fred Ladderoot of Warren, Ontario. Flying Fred, as he's called, is never happier than when he's soaring along in his ultra-light aircraft. It's so beautiful up there. Uh, you feel like you're out of another world, almost. As if you're looking down on the puny humans down below. <laughs> I'm more comfortable up there than I am on the ground. It's serene, uh, it's quiet, and uh, it's beautiful. Well, if you're looking for peace and serenity, how about this castle on Cortez Island, British Columbia? Carol Triller was determined to have one, so he built it. Brick by brick. Countless doors to passage through. Windows with a forest view. A special room that holds a throne where everyone is a king. Yeah, you have a dungeon here? Yes, huge. A real, real dungeon? Yes. Chains and everything? Yes. Yeah, built right into the wall. Ooh. Come down through here, and ooh, this place is dark and wet. This is fabulous. Look at this. He's even got like chains on the wall. And look at these. These are the these are the shackles that they used to put on people, and you just click them on there like that, and then you then you then you'd oh no. Go! Life for me is a riverboat. Watching the sun go down. We found another home with a difference on Quebec's Gatineau River. Architect Alan Hopkins was so taken by the sound of a paddle wheeler, he built one for himself. Ooh, listen to the sound of that. Ever since I heard it the first time, I couldn't get it out of my mind. I mean, that's just like music. This sound is music to Vernon Walters. The sound of a hammer hitting an anvil. Vernon lives in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. He's a marine blacksmith who's forged the iron fittings for some of Nova Scotia's most famous sailing ships. Vernon would like to retire, but there's no one to take his place. I would like to see somebody take over this shop and keep the anvil ringing. Then I could leave it and say, I've placed it in good hands. It still is alive. But you know, until I find that person, I think this is where I'm going to finish my day. And what about 102-year-old Willard Hawthorne? He's Almond, Ontario's resident pool shark. I lost the next game and nothing flat, and I thought to myself, how could he do that? Showing me up like this on national television. Go ahead. I figured his win was just pure luck. I was thinking in a rematch he'd never hold up when he said in that voice coated in honey. Okay, rack him up, Sonny. Oh, you can play by the pool you played this morning, eh? <laughs> oh, well done. Well, if I had a hard time keeping up with a 102-year-old, imagine how tough a time I had with Natalie McMaster. This 20-year-old fiddling sensation from Cape Breton sure kept us moving. (laughs) 
And then there was Sidney Mahaney. Sidney is 96 years old. And for 79 of those years, he's been building fishing dories in this old shop in Shelburne, Nova Scotia. This old shop sure means a lot to an old boy like me. This old shop sure holds a lot of golden memories. And this old shop has sent a lot of Shelburne dories out to sea. This old shop has seen a lot, but it hasn't seen the last of me. How many dories have you made in your lifetime, Sidney? Since I came here, I've done about 10,000 dories. Ten? 10,000. Yeah, I did, okay. Yeah, but I, yeah, I still like that job. Yeah, I still like building the dories. In a way, Sidney Mahaney represents all the people we met this past season. People willing to share their lives and their stories. People we met on the road again. brings us to the close of another season. Thank you so much for joining us each week. We hope you enjoyed watching our program as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Now, in case you missed any of our shows this past season, CBC Television begins reruns next week. Now, while you're watching those this summer, we will be on the road again finding more stories to tell in our upcoming season this fall. We hope that you will join us then. I'm Wayne Rostad, and on behalf of all of us who work on the road again, we hope you have a wonderful summer. Bye for now. Next Tuesday, On the Road Again begins a brand new season here on CBC Television. So be sure to join us Tuesday, September 21st at 7, 7.30 in Newfoundland as we head off on a brand new season of On the Road Again. <laughs>